If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner, and welcome back to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today, and I can't believe this is the premiere of our 15th season. Now, as you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It's more important than ever to become an informed patient, and we are here to bring you timely health discussions. Now, for those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. First, call our live phone line at 718-499-6101. And second, you can email us questions to askthedoctor at netny.net, and we're going to bring them into future discussions or even today's discussions. Now, also new only for this season is the Net Viewers Survey. And this is very important. For those who like the show, this is like a Nielsen rating for the Net. And we're going to try and see which shows are drumming up the most interest, what your opinion is, what you like to see, what you want to see less of. So it's very important to fill the survey out. And when you call to get on the air, while you're waiting, someone's going to help you fill that survey out. And if you can't get through on the air, you can go on the Net website at netny.net slash doctor and fill out the survey. Or you can even ask, you can call in, and we'll mail it to you. I'm going to give you that address in a little while. And remember, this is a chance to sound off. Everything is anonymous. But if you want to see Ask the Doctor continue, it's very important to fill this survey out. So now we're going to uh, meet our guest for tonight. It's an illustrious panel for our 15th show, Dr. Helen Sogolov, who just made it here, actually, under the wire. And yes. What happened tonight? Well, actually, I couldn't leave. Uh, the garage was blocked completely today. It was just this United Nations, so. Oh, in the city, yes. right, in the yeah, city. Absolutely. But we're glad to see you here. You uh, relax. It's a you pleasure. look beautiful it's a pleasure. as ever. So thank, thank you. you for being thank here. You. Dr. Danny Stevens, a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. And you were on our finale, which is going to be yes. seen at 10 o'clock. Anybody who wanted to see last year's finale, tune in at 10 o'clock tonight, and you're going to see that. It was a great show, if I recall. You get to see all of us twice. This is, uh, <laughs> get to see us twice, and it's a pleasure to have you here. I always like to know the summer went by. Any highlight of the summer? Yeah, relaxing. That's, that's, that's good. all it's it good is. It's good to relax, right? Yeah. Anything? Congratulations on 15 seasons. 15 Unbelievable. Season. Never thought we'd make it, but... Uh, so you didn't have much of a summer. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, Dr. Bruce Garner, who um, also just, we just went through the, the season. We happen to be relatives. Um, anything momentous this se uh, summer? A, lo a lot of things. I want to take up the whole yeah. show, but um, my older son, Ben, began college at Bucknell University. We drove him out there. We're going to Parents Weekend this weekend, but just in case anybody with ideas is watching, we have someone staying in the house and there is an <laughs> alarm system. And my youngest son is back at, um, in uh, Brooklyn Tech High School. But I want to tell you, I know you like restaurants. My wife, Elise, and I just celebrated our 19th anniversary. Oh, very we nice, were very married nice. at a very yeah. young age. Yeah. And we went to a wonderful restaurant. I know it's not far away from where Dr. Stevens lives with his lovely wife and beautiful son. It's called La Silhouette. French food, the people there are wonderful. The owners, Sally and Tito, are gracious. The food is very reasonably placed, and I highly, highly recommend this La very Silhouette good. restaurant. So that's in Manhattan, on in the Manhattan, West Side, West La Silhouette. And um, of course, Chief of Rheumatology at Lutheran Medical Center. And now we're going to do In the News. Okay, we've, I know you've been longing for this out there, and it's been tough to keep up with the show because we were supposed to come on a couple of weeks earlier. We didn't have reruns, but we know that our audience will eventually find us and welcome them back. So number one, a cancer breakthrough, killer T cells. What does this mean? Well, they took three people who had leukemia that were in death's bed. They were going to die the next day. They had such dis disastrous disease. And they took out their white cells. That's, that's what fight infections and can fight cancers. And they took a particular type of the cell called the T cell, and they taught that cell to go in and start to kill the leukemia. And it's interesting. How did they teach that cell? They took the AIDS virus and, and rearranged the, the material in the virus, and it entered the T cell and told the T cell, go out and kill cells. Well, within three weeks, everybody with the leukemia was totally cured, gotten rid of all sites. And a year later, two of the three patients are totally cured. One has slight disease and needs some uh, occasional chemo. But it's amazing that. Um, and I, 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 it's not ready yet to, to start giving to other cancers, but they're going to do a new, a new trial now in the next few weeks 
with leukemia. So it's something uh, you can ask your doctor about. It's very, very important and very interesting. Uh, a breast cancer breakthrough, we had a really good summer with that. A new gene has been found that if you have this gene and your mother or your aunt or your sister had breast cancer, it says that you're going to have a 40% chance of getting it. And it's important because there are many things you can do if you know you're going to get breast cancer, have more frequent screening. Some people even opt to have a mastectomy to prevent breast cancer. So the name of it is CHEK, C-H-E-K-2. And anybody who has a history of breast cancer, the test costs under $100. So it's worth just a blood test going in and getting it, the CHEK2 gene it's called. Now Alzheimer's, everybody seems to know somebody with Alzheimer's disease. It's just devastating and so heartbreaking. Very interesting study came about. They found from MRI tests of the brain that the areas of the memory in people with Alzheimer's didn't get enough nourishment, didn't get enough sugar. And it turns out that they didn't have enough insulin going to their brain to have the sugar absorbed. So what they did was they put insulin in the back of your nose and it would go right up into the brain and go to that area. 80% of the people had improvement to had early Alzheimer's disease with this. This will be available very shortly. So again, get into your doctor, find out if there's any trials that you can become part of because it really had dramatic results. Depression and stroke, as if it's not bad enough to have a stroke. People who are depressed are about 10 times more likely to have a stroke and also to have fatal strokes. So it's very important. It may have a number of reasons. For example, if you're depressed, maybe you don't eat right, you don't exercise, you become obese. There are different reasons, but it's something that's interesting. So I think it's very important, uh, again, if you're depressed, get the depression treated. Again, get into your doctor. Now in the category, not quite in the news, but I'd like to briefly talk about the Francesco Locasiano Memorial Foundation based here in Brooklyn. Great organization, and our thoughts are with the Locasiano family who lost their, lost their son Frankie to osteosarcoma, bed bone tumor, and treatment related to AML, that's a type of leukemia, at the age of 17. While Frankie was battling his illness, he spent many months encouraging others to have faith in the power of prayer. It was Frankie's great wish to develop his own foundation to care for children in the pediatric cancer community. To know more about the organization and their work, and I, I urge you to get there and look at it, visit the website at www.frankiesmission.org. So it's really a worthwhile organization, and I wish them well, and I know they have a big dinner coming up. I hope it's a big success. Of course, a, a new season would not be a season. I see him sitting out there, smiling, waving. Monsignor, we see you. It's great to have you back. How was, you know, Monsignor was out on the boat. He has a boat over in uh, Sheepshead Bay. Was it damaged at all in the hurricane? No. Thank God. Okay. That's great. Now, we'll get back to you in a while. Monsignor, enjoy. Sit back. Relax. You may get this quiz. What was the first toy? Here's the quiz now. People write it down. What was the first toy advertised on TV? Yeah. Not the first toy ever made, but the first toy for which there was a commercial. And for this opening episode of our 15th season, in addition to the handmade plaque from Japan, which is very, really coveted in Brooklyn right now <laughs> and all over the city. <laughs> Can you see this? I mean, this is a magnificent shirt. I mean, I never felt polyester as smooth as this, okay? <laughs> now, can you see this? Be proactive, ask the doctor, okay? And um, you wash, the black comes off right away with soap, so don't worry <laughs> if it gets on you, but we're really proud to have this, and whoever wins is gonna get this, and a surprise for our doctors up here, the first three doctors on the show are gonna get their own shirt, okay? Wonderful. So, um, thank, you. Thank, thank you for this. I mean, I don't know what our, what our guys will think of next. I mean, it's just <laughs> amazing, amazing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a short break, but before we do that, I, oh, again, I have to remind you about this survey, because you want to see us back on the air? You, you must finish this survey. So during this autumn season, what, we, what you need to do is fill it out. Now, how do you get the survey? When you call in the show to ask a question, while you're calling in, we'll have someone ask you to help fill out the question. Number two, you're going to write into net at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. I hope to put that number up on the screen or the address. 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. And the, the heading should be to NET. They're going to use this to determine which shows stay, which shows go, which shows are, how, are on longer. So, I mean, 15 seasons came back. It was your feedback that got us back on for tonight. Get us back on. Let your voice be heard. So, again, tonight's topics, lung disease, surgery, and rheumatology. The number to call, 718-499-6101. Or you can email the questions to ask the doctor at netny.net. We'll be right back. <music> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. 
see an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are lung disease, surgery, rheumatology. Let's meet the doctors again. Dr. Sogolov, Hi. Pul pulmonary medicine, tell them what kind of patients you see. Uh, a lot of patients who are smokers, a lot of patients who have asthma, a lot of patients who have lung cancer, unfortunately, uh, and uh, rare things like uh, lung disease sociopathology <coughs> and lung disease infections and uh, uh, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, which is once again not a... So a lot of diseases that can be helped, disease. you know, it doesn't mean a death sentence. So Absol oh, absolutely not. Absolutely nothing these days is a death sentence. I don't believe in that. I think there is, a, there is a right approach and there is a right understanding of the disease and the process how to approach it. Absolutely. Everything is very... Uh, very, very, I wouldn't say curative, but certainly have a very good treatment and good prognosis. Excellent. And just on a personal side, did you have any great ski trips or anything this uh, no, recently? No, I was just, I'm, I'm recovering from hurricane. Oh, I'm that was, that was amazing. Chopping. Right, right. Did <laughs> yes, you get a hit at all in that? Anything? Yes, I now have enough wood to last me for wow. years. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great to have you here. Those out there with Thank lung you. disease, chronic lung disease, we're going to um, take care of your questions. And mm -hmm. Dr. Stevens, I know you've been pioneering the stomach surgery, I forget what you call it, up at the Bronx VA for some of yeah. our veterans. It's, it's been very uh, rewarding. I do a lot of bariatric, it's weight loss surgery and laparoscopic surgery. Um, it's for morbidly obese patients who have not uh, been successful at losing weight with, with diet and exercise. So how, if someone's watching out there and he thinks he's morbidly obese, what, is more, what does that mean? Let's say the guy's 40 years old. Yeah, well, it's actually got a definition. It's, it's called the BMI, the body mass index. So all you need to do is Google BMI. It's all, all it is is your weight and your height. You figure out your BMI. If you're above a 40 or above a 35 with a disease related to your weight, like diabetes or hypertension, mm -hmm. you might qualify for the surgery. So how many, any, any guesstimate in pounds? Like if I'm it's, supposed to be 200? It's generally 100 pounds overweight. 100, okay. So anybody out there, it's amazing, right? The, the disease is it's great. We're curing diabetes, wow. high blood pressure, hypercholesterol, amazing. and it's, it's, we're doing good. Just amazing. And um, any, any uh, hobbies that you... I, I, somebody told me you might play squash? Yeah, a little bit. I don't have any hobbies. I think, no. what's his name? Doesn't Dr. Um, Shagnevich? Absolutely. So we got to get He's a little... Yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. Great squash play. Yeah. play a little bit of squash. <laughs> great. So <laughs> thanks for coming back. You're always thanks a great guest. Me. And um, it's great to have you back for season 15. Thanks. Dr. Bruce Garner, I can't, how many people come up to me, not only to say what a great doctor and how you've helped them, they want to know about this knee thing. They know the knees are killing them. Should they get the knee replaced or should they get an injection in there? What should they do? Well, if they're morbidly obese, they yeah. should see Dr. Stevens mm -hmm. and that might help the arthritis a great deal. You try and put off surgery at all costs, always. Um, however, one of the greatest advances in the past hundred years in medicine has been the advent of the ability to put in new knees if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to treat it on a case-by-case -case basis. But before they go, I think it's a good idea to see a rheumatologist see a doctor to make sure that that's the right choice to go for. You exactly. Don't want to so we're going to get a lot of those questions in and um, we always wonder who's going to be our first guest. Is it going to be Joe Stiles? Could it be Grace? Could it be Maddie? Let's see who it is. Hello? Hello, Dr. Gardner. Who is this? Maddie. It's Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Maddie, Hi, Maddie. the first <laughs> caller of the 15th season. I, how do you do it? I'm hanging in there, Dr. <laughs> that's great, great. And he, how was your summer? Uh, it was good. I was home. That's good. You rest up. But I want to ask you about my fingers. They're numb. Well, Maddie's had these numb fingers for such a long time. Uh, yeah. I, I started, anybody want to grab that one? Well, there, there are a number of possibilities why they might be numb. Maddie, do, do you have any disease such as diabetes, which might cause something we call a neuropathy? No. I don't have none of that. Okay. Do you have a pinched nerve, perhaps, in your neck, which might cause numb fingers? I, well, I fell twice. I'm sorry, what? She fell twice. twice. So I don't know if that had an Well, effect. it might have because sometimes by falling you could get what we call the carpal tunnel syndrome. The carpal tunnel is basically an area, there's a nerve which goes here through the wrist to the fingers. It's called the, carp the median nerve and it's through an area called the carpal tunnel. Yeah. And when you press down on that area, and quite often it could happen from trauma from a fall, it's very similar to when you're sleeping on your arm at night and yet all of a sudden your arm falls asleep and you have to wake up and shake it? Yeah. That, no, well, it doesn't hurt me, but it's numb. 
the fingers. So, Maddie, we got to get you an X-ray and see if this is happening. What Dr. Garner is saying, and and see if we can help you with that. All right. Okay. Maddie, have a great yes. call, and I hope you're going to be calling us each week. Okay. Thanks a lot, Maddie. You're welcome. Take have care. Good one, doctor. Thanks a lot. Let's go to Ivan now. Now we've broken the ice here. Hey, Ivan, how are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, good. You have a. Qu yeah, I think you might have an answer to the quiz. Yes. I Okay. Yes. You've got to turn off the radio. I hear that seven-second delay. Oh, okay. Um, uh, turn it off. We won't say anything. Go. The Barbie doll? The Barbie doll? Yes. Wait a second now. You, you got me startled here. Is it the Barbie doll? Oh, Ivan, Ivan, I'm sorry. It was a good guess, though. I thought of that, the Barbie doll. Good, good one. Good, good thought. Yeah. What can we do for you? Okay. Uh, Dr. Garner, I, I took a bistolic, five milligrams, and I'm just, you know, going through the headache, the dizziness, you know, the whole thing. Usually, uh, and it gives abdominal pain that I, of course, I have irritable bowel and I'm experiencing abdominal pain. How long does that usually last before those side effects tend okay. to subside a little bit? Okay. So bi bistolic is actually, it's a, it's a beta blocker, uh, and uh, it's twice a day medication, so I hope within, uh, I wouldn't say it's going to last 12 hours, but I would say within four hours it should be gone, uh, the, sim the symptoms of... Because I have, I have the abdominal pain and the aches and pains and headaches for the last four days. I just started the medication. Okay, good. So. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, and you've been taking medication every single uh, day, twice oh. a day? Oh, no, bistolic, five milligrams. Uh, the doctor only will put me on it once a day. Once a day. Yeah. I see. So, uh, you know, I certainly would, uh, would watch for another couple of days, but if that's not going to go away, I would uh, find out what exactly is that the bistolic that's causing that or something else is going on. Thanks, Ivan. Appreciate the call. Feel better. Let's go now to Grace. Hi, Grace. Hello. Grace. Yes. Hi. Uh, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. I can't yeah. help but ask, where do you like to eat out there? Uh, I like to eat at... Agnanti. 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 What a, that's, a, that's that Greek place? Yes. Is that still there? It's still there. Yeah. You know, don't you think that place doesn't have too many customers, but it looks, it's delicious food? Yeah, it is. Very good. I, I like never it. know why. You walk in there, it's empty. You're never, you're always deciding which table you want. It's like an <laughs> empty, I'll take that one, that one. <laughs> I, I like to eat the whole fish, you know. See me the whole too. Me too. They have that branzino. Yes. Yeah, it's always the special of the day, that branzino. I don't know when it's from, but it's delicious, delicious. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. So, do um, you have an answer to our quiz? I am saying Slinky. Slinky. That's an interest. Did you have a Slinky when you were younger? Yes. Yeah. Was that your favorite toy? Uh, one of them, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Was it Slinky? Oh, Grace, Grace, I'm sorry. Is it Big Letdown? No, it's okay. Very good, because I had this shirt, don't forget. I don't, I don't want to make it any worse, okay? <laughs> okay. But do you have any medical issue? Uh, yes, I do. What, what can we do for you? Uh, my doctor told me that thyroid disease may be related to rheumatologic diseases. Mm -hmm. Should I see a rheumatologist? Okay, quick answer for that one. Well, the quick answer is I I if you have good insurance, I certainly would be happy to see you. But the answer is yes, thyroid disease is very commonly related to rheumatologic disease. As a matter of fact, there was a study which appeared in the past week showing that what they call subclinical thyroid disease, meaning you have thyroid disease, but you don't have any symptoms, but the thyroid disease is there, is present in people who have lupus. As a matter of fact, thyroid disease may be the first sign of a disease such as lupus or a disease called Sjogren's syndrome, which is usually dry eyes and a dry mouth. So I think certainly if you're found to have a rheumatologic disease, you should be evaluated also for signs and symptoms of thyroid disease. But remember we said that thyroid disease might be subclinical, so it may be a good idea to have the thyroid checked out whenever you have a rheumatologic disease and vice versa. So that's, that's an excellent question, and I just want to say I happen to like Agnante also. Thanks, Grace. I wanted to ask Dr. Stevens a quick question regarding thyroid disease now. Sometimes you need to do surgery on the thyroid? Sometimes, especially if there's a nodule or a mass in the thyroid. Usually you get a radiological workup first, you can get an ultrasound, and then first thing to do, you stick a needle in it and see what you get cells from the nodule, and then you take it from there. But if 
God forbid it's a cancer, it needs to come out. And is that a general surgeon, or you go to head and neck surgeon? There are some there? general surgeons who do it. I think as the years go on, it's mostly uh, ENT surgeons, ENT. head and neck surgeons, but it's definitely within the realm of a general surgeon. So Grace, we hope you, um, we feel better. Um, we have some kind of an email up there. I see we got an email in there from um, Patricia. And she said a friend heard you, or, or at least I think it was you, being interviewed about a method that restores bladder and bow bowel control to patients suffering spinal cord injury. My son bruised his spinal cord in the lower back in July of 2010, and he had a fusion in that area. He has no sensation to his bladder and no feelings in his rectum. My question is twofold. Is there such a method, and are you the doctor? I know this email is for a talk show, but I'm really just trying to contact you to see if I'm on the right track. Thank you for any help you can give. And um, it wasn't a, a show that I was talking about, but I know there have been many stories out about stem cells and using um, stem cells to try and regain some sensation in the bladder and some remarkable results. Uh, anybody want to pick that one up? Well, I think it's, it's a promising, uh, you know, therapy, but I think it's still sort of experimental and uh, you probably, uh, it's not done in too many places and it depends on the duration of the paralysis and, and the dysfunction, et cetera, but you might want to try to get into a clinical trial. That's probably the best, the best bet. Yeah, so we wish you the best of luck on this. You know, it sounds like a tragic event, but it sounds like there's some hope on the horizon and I'm going to be on the lookout for you too, so maybe we'll report back next week on some new things. And this is, now, another question is coming from Marianne. <coughs> not so much a question, but rather some news. In May, my mother, Caroline Palestino, met you at Methodist Hospital Brooklyn. You are kind enough to mention her in the column in the tablet. Thank you. It made her feel special. Unfortunately, just one short mo month later, on June 15th, Mom passed away. Wanted to let you know. God bless you. Very sad story. Beautiful woman. I'm sorry that happened, and I was glad we, at least we got it in the tablet, and she was happy about that. Can we go back to our busy, um, going back to our busy email still, huh? Okay, email number three is from Les in Houston, Texas. Wow. I see you served in the Air Force, and I was wondering if that had any impact on your decision to be a doctor. That's Les. Actually, the Air Force paid for my medical school, so that I went to become a doctor if it weren't for the Air Force, and then went to Plattsburgh Air Force Base, upstate New York, and ran the family practice clinic for, for three years. And I loved it, and um, I would urge anybody who would like to do you know, such a path to, to continue to do that, because it's a great way it, gives you great training and you meet a lot of great people, so thanks a lot for that. Okay, we're going to go to our busy phones or we're going to go to our busy emails? Okay. All right. So while we're, while we're taking a break, um, Dr. Sogolov, tell me the difference between COPD and fibrosis of the lung. Um. Pathologically, very, very different entities. Uh, pathological meaning that if you actually uh, cut somebody's lung out, look at it, it's very different uh, ways of... Uh, uh, but for the patient, both feel the same. It's shortness of breath. Uh, and this actually, I think, the approach to, um, uh, to the disease mm -hmm. uh, and the conversations you have with your physician and the commitment to each other that helps you to actually deal especially with disease like COPD and fibrosis because it's not going to go away one or the other. Uh, and you just have to make sure that it's not getting worse. So you have to have treatment, which is inhalers, which at times steroids, definitely immunization, especially today is September. So please, immunization is a immunization. must. Immunization. So the flu Absolutely. shot out. Anybody flu get the flu shot Absolutely. yet? Oh, okay. Yes, I think we, <laughs> we all Excellent. got. And, uh, uh, and uh, basically follow advice and be disciplined. But they can get smoke. better. With COPD, uh, you, can, you can be stable. But uh, better once lungs are gone, they're gone. So please don't smoke and uh, make sure that all your uh, infections are being approached and cured. So Thank you. We're going to go to our email, fourth email. Hi, Dr. Garner. My question is, my father recently had an aortic valve replacement and now faces the after effects. Surgery, namely swollen ankles, feet, and legs. Can you explain how Lasix pills works? And should you be drinking water while taking it, since the purpose of the pill is to remove water? Can compression socks help? Is that by a doctor prescription? Uh, Dr. Stevens? Yeah, well, this is a pretty common um, uh, side effect after a cardiac surgery, I think, and the swelling is partly due to, you know, the heart is not pumping out the, the blood that it, the way it used to, and it could also be partly that your kidneys aren't functioning as well as they did before the surgery because the heart surgery may have had a, an effect on the kidneys. So number one, yes, the Lasix does help the, ki the kidneys uh, get rid of the fluid, but you also need to keep well hydrated and drink water, so they, it doesn't work against each other. 
um, and compression stockings are excellent for uh, helping the peripheral edema in your legs. So you can get it from a doctor prescription, but you can probably also go into a surgical supply store and get it. Thanks for that answer. Let's go to Rudy. I wonder if it's the former mayor. Could it be Rudy? Is this yes, Mr. Giuliani? Yes, hello, doctor. How are you? Who, who, Rudy? Yes. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Ridgewood, Queens. Ridgewood, that's where right on the border of Brooklyn, Queens? Yes. Yeah, so what's a restaurant? I don't, I don't know much out there in restaurants. What do you like to go out there? Oh, let's see. I usually travel for restaurants myself. I used to go to Fort Cor Four Corners in Bay Ridge. Four Corners. Great. great. Yeah. Is that a great place? Very nice place. Yeah. Very nice place. Where else? Uh, I've been there. I've been to uh, Monty's. Oh, Mon you know, they reopened Monty's, I understand. It used to be the Venetian Room, right? And now it's just Monty's. Yeah. And there, I heard very good things about them. So, and Rudy, what's also Beaumonties in Beaumont Williamsburg. Yeah. Beaumonties. Monty's. Beaumont. Excellent. Good choices. Yes. So, I understand you may have an answer to the quiz. Yes. All right. I was going to say the Shirley Temple doll. Okay. Can you say that a little louder so I can hear that? The Shirley Temple doll. Okay. Is that the right answer? Oh, and I thought I was—I thought you were going to get it, but um, yeah, Shirley Temple was. How how old do you think that doll is? Shirley Temple doll. Yeah, it's got to be at least seventy years old. Amazing, seventy. Is she still alive, Shirley Temple? Yeah, Shirley Temple Black. Yeah, but she recently got divorced, I believe. Well, yeah, she played about the field. five six years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's and right. nobody. Maybe she. Maybe he couldn't get his deposit back on his tuxedo. <laughs> All right, st just stick to the questions, Rudy. Really. Okay. okay. What can we do for you? Well, I was going to a doctor for uh, a case I have of erectile dysfunctional. Okay. And as a result, I've been getting two frequencies of uh, urinating at night when I go to bed. Okay. So I told my doctor this. He says there's a procedure. I've been going for about five, six months at least. I said, okay, let's go with the procedure. When he went through the procedure, he told me, he ran into a wall of scar tissue. Okay. Now, what happened now is that uh, it's over a year, it's about 16 months, and I seen, uh, I see no results. Okay, so Rudy, uh, um, and a lot of this is done laparoscopically, I believe. It can be. It, you know, urologists usually do does these procedures. Some of it's done through the bladder. Um, sounds like that may have been what you had, Rudy. Um, are you on any medicines now to help treat this? Oh, uh, yes. I'm dex dextrol, and I'm on uh, the, it begins with a V. Uh, begins with a V? Yes. Mm. Va not Valium. Oh, That's all right. You know, I think, Rudy, you probably need to go back and see your urologist who did the procedure. Uh, call his office up, make an appointment, explain to him what's going on, and, you know, hopefully you don't need another procedure, but it may be possible that he may need to change or add some medicines to, to help the frequency at night, because that's usually, th these medicines now are very good. Rudy, I, uh, while we're talking about erectile dysfunction, I wanted to ask so Dr. Sogolov and Dr. Garner, if they see that it, with people with chronic lung disease, is there any increased incidence with people with rheumatoid arthritis, with, rheum with arthritic disease, is there increased incidence? So, Dr. Oh, Zoglo? Definitely not with, the, with lungs. No I've, problem. I've, no, I've never seen that. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of diseases with lungs are associated with the cardiac diseases and diabetes does, so in that, in that but it's not directly related. Not directly no. related. How about that? Very similarly, we see erectile dysfunction in patients with rheumatologic diseases. One of the things we worry about in rheumatologic diseases is cardiac cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. which is intimately related. And erectile dysfunction may be the first sign of cardiovascular disease, and we want to treat both quite aggressively. It's good that it's out there. People feel free to talk about and go in. So thanks a lot for the call, Rudy. We appreciate it. God bless you, and congratulations on your 15th uh, 15th years. year. Thanks a lot. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we have Florence asking us now. I think Florence on line two, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Florence, how are you? Okay. Okay, good, good. You sound like you're down to business here. You, I, think yes. you, I think you have the answer to the quiz. Yeah. But um, I don't, don't give it yet. I like to build it up a little bit. Where are you from? Oh, Maspeth, Queens. Maspeth, very nice out there. You did the, what's the name of that? The Three Brothers or something? Huh? The Three Brothers? Did you ever eat out there? Um, yeah, I ate there one time. You're not impressed, are you? Yeah, they're pretty good. Pretty good. What do you like out there? What would you eat? I like, I eat a fame. Where's and fame on Grand Avenue in Mashbeth. Oh, F A N E. Yeah, and okay. I eat at Good Eats. Goodies. Good, Good eats. eats. Good Eats. Okay. 
So I'm going to try that out there, Mesbeth, right? Okay, now, okay, Lawrence? Uh, I think the answer to the question is Mr. Potato Head. Florence thinks it's Mr. Potato Head. Mm -hmm. Is that the right yes. answer? Okay. I think our, our master of the yeah. drummer might have had a little heart failure after you got that answer. There she goes. Wow. Well, uh, Florence, how did you know that? It is? That is. That is Mr. Potato Head. I picked Mr. Potato Head because I used to watch it on the advertise <laughs> on the TV. Did you have one? You had one. No, I never had one, but I used to watch it. Does that it look on familiar the on the screen? The Does that look familiar on the Mr. Yeah. Potato? Yeah. <laughs> interesting interesting trivia before we t tell you about what you've won. The, oh, okay. The person who invented Mr. Potato, and I heard this from Dr. Stevens. Who was that? George Lerner from Brooklyn. From Brooklyn, New York. George Lerner made Mr. Potato Head. Boy for Christmas. Now, I only got one doll all the years I was growing up. Which was it? A little doll. Uh, my father gave it to me before he died. Uh, they didn't try and pass like Mr. Potato Head off as a doll, did they? No. No, because they could do, here's your doll doing it. You know? yeah, they, they make a uh, face on him, too. Uh, Mr. Potato Head, an interesting trivia. The original yeah. Mr. Potato Head didn't... It, it advertised what looked like a, a face, a potato, but it never came with it. You had to use your own potato. And oh. the people complained, and as a result, they put in a fake potato. Yeah, they put a fake potato. Yeah, the fake potato. But um, that's really great. So are you a long-time yeah. listener? Yes, I listen to Dr. Garner all the time. So look at this. I, mean, I, I watch it even in my bedroom, too. Well, that's enough information. <laughs> but thank you very much for the call. What we're going to do is we're going to have Terrace, we're going to have someone take your information, and you're going to get the handmade plaque from Japan. Oh, I gonna love get, that. And look at this, Florence. Tell me this doesn't... Um, Take this into your bedroom with you. Here. What Look at that? this. Oh, a shawl? Look at that. No, it's not a doll. It's a shirt. A shirt? I like shirts, but I'm a 2X. Ask the doctor. I'm a 2X. We got 2X here. 2X. You got just what you wanted, okay? Oh, 2X is fit me. You got 2X. So, uh, Florence, so thanks. I'm so send it 2X. You're going to get it soon by freight, okay? Okay. Okay, take care. Whew. The excitement of that, uh, <laughs> that Florence. And two, two, how, how could you figure it, 2X? Yeah. You couldn't figure it. I don't, that's an extra line. I, mean, what is that? I don't know what that is. Okay. So anyway, uh, we're, we're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we're going to go to your questions. Now, don't forget the topics are lung disease, surgery, and rheumatoid arthritis. The quiz was just answered for those who didn't hear it, Mr. Potato Head. So please don't forget the survey. Very, very important. Ask the people when you call in, can I fill out the survey? Send in to the station to ask for a survey by mail, or you can go on the computer if you're good at the computer. It's very easy to do. Go on to Ask the Doctor, or go on to netty.net slash Ask the Doctor, and you'll see, take the survey. Okay? And, and we'll be back. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are lung disease, surgery, and rheumatology. And we have Dr. Helen Kilkin Sogolov. Dr. Daniel Stevens, and Dr. Bruce Garner. Let's see if Geraldine is around. Hi, Geraldine. Hi, Dr. Garner. Welcome oh, back. Thank you. Where, uh, where have you been? Where have I been? I know. No, I've been at home all summer. Were you, did, did, you have, did you didn't go anywhere? No trips? No, I'm physically disabled, so it's hard for me to get around. Yeah, yeah. But you, I, was, I was concerned if our show was coming back, right? You kept turning on. You didn't see the I, show. Exactly. I said, what's going on? They advertise, ask the doctor, and then nothing is on. Well, in spite of popular demand, we came back. Thank God. So, yes, it, was, it wasn't easy. No. But, but you've got to fill out that survey. Very important. Because with, the, with the uh, representative. Otherwise, we're going to end up like Ask the Lawyer. Remember that show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So um, what can we do for you? Okay. I have a problem with my red blood count. Okay. And it's been low for the last five, six months. And when I go to the doctor, he, you know, to the hematologist, he, you know, takes the blood again. And he goes, well, it's not too bad this time. We'll see what happens now in another six months. Then he would maybe do a, um, a bone marrow. 
what is the reason for bone marrow and what is it, you know, how is it done? Okay, who wants to take that one? Bone marrow. Uh, when you have a low blood count, be that white cells or red cells uh, or platelets, uh, you want to understand, uh, is it because you're losing it somewhere or you're not making it enough? And uh, to do a re the reason for doing bone marrow biopsy is just to make sure that your bone mar marrow is functioning well <coughs> and that it's producing enough cells, be that white or red or uh, platelets. Uh, bone marrow is usually is a surgical procedure. Uh, and it's done with uh, sedation. Uh, it's uh, not usually overnight, but uh, it's a hospital admission uh, because uh, without sedation it's rather painful, but it is a very important test to undergo uh, to diagnose the problem why you're not having enough cells. Does that help you? Yes, it does. Good, and um, I hope you're feeling better. Thank you so kindly, okay. and I'm glad to see everybody back. And we'll hear from you next week, I hope. I sure hope so. Okay, Geraldine, take care. We're now going to go to Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Very good. Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn. Which part? Park Slope. Park Slope, not far from where we do the show. Right. Just, it helps enlighten our, our listeners about the food. Where do you like to eat in Park Slope? Um, Pizza Plus. Pizza Plus. I don't know. Where is that? On 7th Avenue between 10th and 11th Street. I didn't know it was there. Sounds nice. Is that near um, Soto Voce? I don't know where that is. So on, on the 4th Avenue and 4th Street and 7th Avenue. It's a beautiful place to sit outside during the summer. Anyway, um, what can we do for you? Um, I had a can, can done, and they found a nodule on the lung, and the doctor said it appears to be benign. Okay, good. So uh, I'm happy about that. But he never said to go see another doctor. Right, so you had a nodule in the lung, and he didn't say to follow up? Okay. But it was. Right, so you're not sure what it was. You just know it was benign, but right. you, you never went to another doctor to find out. Correct? Okay, so um, Dr. Sogol, if you find a benign looking nodule, must that calcium, smooth looking thing, mm -hmm. does she need further workup? Uh, well, it depends of, on the size of the nodule, depends on the history a little bit, uh, whether or not you were a smoker or not a smoker, but. Uh, uh, I would recommend follow-up. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to follow it for two years, especially if you're not a smoker, but I would definitely recommend follow-up every four months with a CAT scan. And if it does not increase within two years, it usually proves benignity. So, uh, so it's good news, but you're not out of the woods. You, you need to continue to follow this up. And okay. if you need a doctor, you give us a call after the show, and we'll you know, call this number, and we'll give you um, a doctor to go to. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, mm -hmm. feel better. Hi, we have Penny now. Hi, Penny. Hi. Hi, where are you calling us from? Sheepshed Bay. Oh, th isn't that a great area? Yep. Hello, how was the hurricane there? Monsignor has his boat, actually. Mon and, uh, and we were fine. You made out okay? I was fine, thank God. Very good. And what did they do with Lundy's? I don't know what's going it's on. It's gone. Oh, it's a best, sad. The best. You know where I went on my first date? Lundy's. No. No, <laughs> it turned out to, it was. No, I, just I went there on mine. No, that was great. And then we went on the steeplechase, on the uh, boardwalk there, yeah, the pier. Yeah, yeah, all the rides. You, is El Greco still there? Yes. Very good. It's a beautiful diner. Have you eaten there? Yes. Mm, very nice. Yes. Great. Right, you like that place. And right. so is uh, Gargiulo's. Gargiulo's. Uh, that's in Coney Island, but very nice. Yeah. What, what can we do for you? Okay. My, uh, just to, to let you know, my um, I'm a diabetic, okay. and I had a kidney transplant. Okay. So um, my carbon levels, my carbon dioxide levels are low. Mm -hmm. I want to know what that means because they gave me sodium carbonate to, to eat with every time, you know, I have a, a meal, I have to take two pills. I want to know what causes low carbon okay. and those pills make me deathly ill. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to ask Dr. Stevens to tell us a little bit about the procedure of a transplant, then Dr. Garner to tell us a little bit about the problems with regulation of the fluids when you get with a kidney transplant. So w what happens with a kidney transplant? Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, a lot of patients with diabetes and high blood pressure, those are the two most common reasons that cause kidney failure. So um, you either have to go on dialysis, which is um, not pleasant for a lot of people. It's, it takes a lot of time and effort. So the, uh, the other option is a kidney transplant. And basically what is done is an incision is made in the lower abdomen and 
a, a donor kidney or a cadaver kidney is transplanted and it's uh, connected to your blood vessels. Can you live, can, if I want to donate a kidney to a relative, can you live with you one can kidney? Have, yes, you can live with one kidney. So they're living donors. That's probably the best case scenario. Um, but um, they're, they're cadaver and, and living donors are both good. They connect it to your blood vessels and to your, your bladder, your ureter, which connected to the bladder. And patients do very well. You can, the kidney can last for many years, but they can, over time, have problems due to the same underlying disease, diabetes and hypertension. And I'll let Dr. Garner talk about it a little bit. You know, maybe it affects the, uh, the CO2. Yeah, and, I'm and thinking of rheumatologic disease that might cause kidney problems. Well, certainly we do have a number of <coughs> rheumatologic diseases which can cause kidney problems. But it's not just the diseases themselves to worry about. Quite often, it's the treatment for the diseases. And many people take what we think is seemingly benign innocuous medications over the counter, such as ibuprofen, Advil, or Aleve, naproxen. And these medications can actually cause not just kidney damage, but liver damage. Briefly, talking about the bicarbonate, the body wants to maintain what we call homeostasis. Remember from high school or junior high, there's an acid medium and a basic medium. And you want the body to be right in the middle. You want it to be neutral. If there's too much acid or too much base, it can cause problems. It can cause problems with your metabolism, it can cause problems with getting oxygen throughout the body. And sometimes when the kidney isn't functioning well, you can get a buildup of byproducts. So you would have too much of an acid medium. So the bicarbonate, it's like soda or bicarbonate, is helping neutralize too much acid in the body in the most simplest form. Excellent. I hope that helps you understand, you know, trying to equalize the acid and the base of the of how the kidneys are doing and keeping the fluid in the body. So call us back and let us know how you're doing, please. Let's go now to Rose. Hi, Rose. Rose? Oh, I think we might have lost Rose. Okay. We have a mystery caller, though, on line four. Hello? 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 Yes, hi. Who is this, please? Hi, Doctor. This is Ari from Brooklyn. Who is this? Ari? Ari, yeah. Very nice. We, which part of Brooklyn? Uh, Midwood. Uh, we've spoken before. Did I run into you on Avenue J? very possible. That's where I live. I think I, re I remember running into Ari, yeah. You're a loyal listener to the show, I believe, right? Yes, I am. Not a great comedian, though. I think Ari once gave us a joke that, uh, right, Ari? I don't know if it was me or not, but... All right. <laughs> All right, it's better that it wasn't you. So, what can we do for you, Ari? Well, um, my knees are pretty bad. I have um, anterior cruciate lateral in the right knee uh, for many, many years. Back to like 79, there wasn't too much they could do for that one. And my left knee, I have osteoarthritis. <clears throat> and um, the, the, the joint is really worn down pretty bad. And it was recommended to me that I get knee replacement. Uh, with the knee with the osteoarthritis, I was also, I was also wondering if it was possible uh, by injecting that gel that they have now. All right, Ari, let's ask Dr. Garner. There is a gel which is available. There, it's available under different trade names, Simvisc and Orthovisc and Uflexa. And basically what it is, it's an oil for the knees. It's a series of injections, anywhere from one injection, usually most commonly three injections, one injection per week for three weeks. And if it helps, what it does is it helps, it's, it's like oiling a squeaky hinge on a door. It helps to give you some lubrication in the knee. Hopefully that will help to decrease some pain and increase mobility. You can safely give these injections every six months. Now there was an interesting study which was just published a week and a half ago showing that if you give these once a month for six months, you may have even greater effect. So it's certainly something to try. If you're able to take these injections and they're able to help you, it may put off getting, or may totally put off getting, not just for some time, but it may prevent you from having to need a knee replacement. So it's certainly worth trying, Ari. Beautiful, Ari. And don't forget, fill out that survey, okay? Hi. Okay, now we're going to go to Rose. Hi, Rose. Rose? You seem to have some trouble with Rose. Trying Rose a couple of times. Rose? I'm here. Yes. Oh, Rose. Good, good. I got, well, what's going on? Hi. I see you're subject to surgery, and... The doctor was just talking about possible preventing knee replacement, and I just had a double knee replacement six months ago. How are you doing? They say I'm doing well. I'm not 
where I thought I would be after six months. And my question was, why did they give me an antibiotic to take before certain procedures that I have to do for life? Why did they give antibiotics before surgery? Not before, after surgery. After surgery. They gave me a prescription to fill for an antibiotic before I, ha before I go to the dentist for any work, before it, mm. if I'm going to go for colonoscopy, I have to take it. And I'm just wondering why. Okay. I mean, not always, but why, why do yeah. sometimes you think... Well, sure. Rose, in this, your particular situation, you have two artificial knees, so you have a foreign body inside of you, whether they're metal or plastic or titanium. Uh, if those get infected, it's extremely dangerous. You can get uh, bacteremia, you can get bacteria in your bloodstream, and it could be a very serious infection. If you get a dental procedure or a colonoscopy, in theory, you could... Um, you could infect your bloodstream. You can get uh, bacteria entering your bloodstream and it can get into your artificial knees. So anytime you undergo one of those procedures, a prophylactic dose of antibiotics may help, get, may help those knees from getting infected. So that's why they gave it to you. But so, I just have to take one dose an hour before the procedure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's right. That was that to infect. That will prevent anything? Yes, it should. So, Rose, where are you calling us from? Sheepshead Bay. Sheepshead Bay. Okay, keep the faith out there, okay? Thank you. Take care. Lewis. Hello. Hi, Lewis. How are you? Okay, how you doing, Doctor? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Man Manhattan, Little Italy, and we have the St. Gennaro Festival going on. How is on. it out there? Should we go there this weekend? Well, it's kind of crowded. It's not like it used to be. Uh, what is? I know, right? Yeah. Right. But, um, is it nice out there? Yeah, it's not bad. It's a, it's a little misty and humid, you know. Are you going to be there? We had out there on a Saturday or Sunday night. Are you going to be there? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Come and see me at my house. How would I get to know you? Well, I'll give you my address and All phone right. number. Okay. <laughs> we'll do that after, off the air, okay? Because we'll, um, we'll have a whole army there. Okay. What can we do for you? Okay. Uh, I've been having this uh, slight low back pain for quite a while. But then it started to uh, go down my legs uh, from my buttocks, a sciatica-type pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went to the doctor. It gradually got uh, worse and worse. I got more pain down my legs and my buttocks. So uh, I've been going to the hospital for special surgery in Manhattan here. And uh, be, I've had three epidurals. I've had some physical therapy. And nothing uh, seems to be working. I, I st it's when I'm walking that I have the most pain. Okay, so we've got a, a long history. It's not like it happened overnight. Let's start to go on to kick this one off. Okay, I just wanted to say I used to live down there on Grand Street when my wife Elisa and I were first married. We lived on Grand Street, not far away from Little Italy. Right. Did, did they say you have spinal stenosis, Lou? Yeah, and I have a, I have a bulging disc also. Well, did. Basically, what happens is you have a nerve which is being compressed. The nerve goes down the spinal cord. It's very similar to uh, the cardboard in, in a roll of toilet paper or a roll of paper towels. And the nerve goes through that roll. That nerve is being compressed, and it's com being compressed more when you walk. As a matter of fact, I suspect when you stop walking, it takes quite some time for the pain to go away. Am I correct in the legs and the buttocks? Yeah, but I, I, find the, I found a way to sit down and elevate the, the good leg, and it seems to take the pain away. Well, it sounds oh. as if the epidurals haven't worked because you can only get three epidurals in a year. And yeah, and I've had them. They've tried other medications such as antidepressants, medications, anti-seizure medications such as Lyrica, which are very helpful for this condition. Uh, I take a whole lot of meds. I take uh, antidepressants. I take anti-anxiety pills. Okay, interestingly enough, the antidepressants and the anti-anxiety pills help to prevent the transmission of impulses, pain impulses in the nerves. If that hasn't worked, and it sounds like you've tried everything, have they pr presented surgery to you as an option? No, but I think my next visit, which will be on Friday, uh, we may have to discuss that. I, I think that's what they're going to do, and I think it's a viable alternative because you don't want to continue living like mm. this. Lou, uh, thanks a lot. We've got to move on because so many callers are there, but it's great to hear from you. I'm just worried about the, the different procedures in surgery. Well, you're going to one of the finest hospitals in the world for that kind of surgery, so you're in good hands. Why don't you call us back next week? We have an orthopedist with us, and we'll go over a little bit more of the surgical options. Okay, thank you very much. Look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Okay. 
We're going to go now through our rapid-fire segment. We're going to go around the table. We're going to start first with an email, and then we'll go to a phone call. We'll alternate. Email from Patty in Staten Island. My dear friend has an enlarged liver, 19 centimeters, a protruding abdomen. Her labs for hepatitis are negative. Her MRI shows a fatty liver. She had colonoscopy that was normal. Triglycerides are over 350. Can this be giving abdominal pain or fatty liver? Uh, I don't think that a fatty liver can give you abdominal pain. Um, didn't hear about this, but uh, certainly Correct. elevated trigly triglycerides uh, can give you fatty liver. So you really have to go on a diet, and if the diet would not help, uh, consider medication. Thank you. Now go to email from Urja, India. It's amazing. We, we reached Texas. I thought it was the longest. Urja, <laughs> India. It says namaste. No, it says hello. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to know more about what is exactly my mother suffering so from. Symptoms she's facing. This is going to be for Dr. Stevens. She's not able to swallow food easily. She has drastic weight loss in five to six months. Her skin has become rough and color darkened. Change in her voice, hands and legs. She's become numb and swollen, gets tired easily, suffers weakness. It would be very kind of you if you could help me in this matter because we can't make out exactly what a mother's suffering from. We'd be most grateful. Thank you. You heard. What have you yeah, had here? You know, those first two symptoms are a little worrisome. That you're, she's losing weight and she's unable to swallow. She really needs to go to her regular doctor and pro probably be referred to a gastroenterologist to do an endoscopy and make sure there's nothing in her esophagus or stomach that's not allowing her to eat. So um, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, but she definitely needs a workup, including an endoscopy. Okay, we're going to go now to the next email and a quick answer from Dr. Garner. My wife has Alzheimer's disease since 2001. Will the method of injecting the medicine Spe um, and that's, I guess, the insulin into the brain through the nose that you mentioned help return some of her memory. Um, thanks if you can give any help. Actually, um, the study which was done was a very small study looking at people who got nasal, nasally administered insulin. And it was too small a study really to extrapolate into the human population from. It, it certainly is something we're hopeful it is going to be successful but it's unfortunately a number of years in the future. What you may want to do is try and get your wife involved in a clinical study, see if the studies are being done in the New York area, and certainly anything that could help is something which we'd like to see done. Nice. Excellent answer. Let's go to Christine. 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 Yes, I hear you. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Where are you, How are you calling us from? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling you from Midwood, Brooklyn. Midwood, Brooklyn. Off Ocean Parkway, Avenue H. Ocean Parkway and Avenue H. Nice area. You have, yeah, a shop nice. in, you have a shop in pomegranate? Yes, I shop in pomegranate. I like their deli counter. I like that place. What yeah. a great, there's a great rest. Um, they have all gourmet food. I, I, I love it. It's delicious, though. Get a little pricey, but sometimes you treat yourself, you know? Yeah. What, what's your question? Well, I just had a procedure at Methodist Hospital. I've never had surgery in my life, but I came in with some kind of bite on my pinky finger on my left. And it seems to affect the, uh, it doesn't affect the, uh, the inside the tendon, the sleeve of the tendon or something. And my blood pressure was like over the top. It could have been because I was nervous. I take Benicar, but that doesn't seem to really bring the blood pressure down. So they were giving me all kinds of stuff. And I ended up with a uh, lesson of pro, 10 milligrams, and hydrochloric acid. Okay, so wait, let me try and, because I can't, I can't understand you. I, just want, I know there was some kind of a bite to the finger, was it, or something, a tendon? I think what happened is she went in for some sort of a tendon infection, and they found that you had high blood yeah. pressure. Does that, and then now she's on a bunch of medicine. Okay, so who's that turn? Dr. Sogolov? High blood pressure in 10 seconds. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> That'll give you high blood That's pressure. Okay, exactly. <laughs> Down to five seconds. No, I mean, uh, when you have, uh, if that was a bite and then infection, uh, the situation itself can give you uh, blood pressure. So I would wait for a little while. I would not overreact. If you never had a history of high blood pressure, because sometimes pain can give you high blood pressure. Sorry so to rush you on that one, that's but that's okay, but a good basically answer. Basically, that's, yeah. that's what I would do first. The last caller of the 15, so 15 season premiere is Antoinette. Antoinette? Yes. Hi, you're our last caller tonight. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, you don't win anything, though. Don't get too happy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what's your question? Yes. What's the question? I, I, um, I, I used to weigh um, over 300 pounds, and I lost a lot of weight, and after I lost the weight, my tailbone 
had a lot of pain in it. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there, Dr. Stevens. Lost a lot of weight tailbone given the pain. Uh, it's possible that you lost some the fat pad that's covering your tailbone, and it's actually causing, when you sit, it's... Uh, you know, it's causing direct pressure there, so that's a, that's a tough one. You might need to get some x-rays and see if there's anything wrong with the bones themselves. Okay, does that help? Yes, it helps some. Um, thank you. Where are you calling us from, Antoinette? Brooklyn. Which part? Crown, Crown Heights. Can you call us back next week? Because I hate to rush through it like that. Yes, I can. Yeah, because I, I didn't get the answer. I wanted, I wanted to explain something. Okay, so we don't have time, but, but next week I'm going to take you. If you call in right at the beginning, call in at 5 to 8. All right. Okay, have a nice week. Thank you. Take care, Antoinette. I, can't, I mean, we rush. We can, you know, we still got a full line here. I want to say that I, I want to thank everybody, the listeners and our guests, for participating in our premier season show. That survey, I cannot stress how important it is. So get that survey, fill it out, send it in as soon as you can. Dr. Helen Kilkin Sogolov, Dr. Daniel Stevens, Dr. Bruce Garner, thank you for coming in. And we hope that we were able to help you, the audience. It's good to remember that you should always be proactive about your health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions. Next week, we're going to have geriatrics. We're going to have a little imaging, a non-invasive imaging. That means the heart. We're going to look at how we look at the heart. And what about dental and oral surgery? Interesting show. So visit our website until next week at netny.net slash doctor. Here you can see the tablet column, podcast, our forum, and you can email, email the questions in advance to participate in our viewers' survey. Participate in that survey. I want to thank you all who have participated, and especially thanks to Dr. Linda Lapatosa, our quiz master. And thank you all for your questions. Goodbye. I'll see you in the tablet.